worthy of the promises of Christ. And let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. This is Father Benedict Kroll, the Director of Mission Advancement for the Angelicum in Rome. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. It is Monday, the 12th of February, on this Shrove Monday. Let's begin together in prayer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, you are the fount of life. Enliven the listless spirits of believers who have lost their taste for prayer. You are the tree of life. Make strong the branches who have been weakened by the storms of daily life. Your spirit is the living water flowing from your side. Deepen the roots of those who have grown restless for more abundant life. Your church is the orchard fed and pruned by your love. May all who seek peace find rest in its shade. God, our Father, by the death of your Son, you planted the seed of the tree of life deep in the earth. By his resurrection, you give it light and warmth. By the gift of the Spirit, you water it with the waters of life that flowed from his side on the cross. May our lives bear its fruit through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. It is a better way to start a Shrove Monday. Only two more days before we hit Lent, and we're already well into the first one of those. It is the Sunrise Morning Show. I'm Matt Swain. Amanda Mitchell has news. Paul Lockman at the controls. Travis has a video feed up and running at sunrisemorningshow.com. Busy day yesterday for Travis, but he made it into work. We're glad. Up this hour... Uh, we have Kevin Schmeezing with a look at This Week in Catholic History. Father Patrick Briscoe will look at some of the faith themes that showed up during the Super Bowl yesterday. Father John Gavin will unpack the meaning of the word amen. And then Father Sebastian Walsh will discuss a little bit about his order, the Norbertines, and how they approach the season of Lent, which again starts day after tomorrow. Right now it is two minutes past. Here's Anna Mitchell with news. Good morning. The Senate is moving forward with a $95 billion aid bill for Ukraine and Israel, but its fate in the House remains uncertain. The money, which is for Ukraine's defense against the Russian invasion and for Israeli security assistance, passed a Senate procedural vote with the help of 18 Republicans in a rare Sunday session. If the bill passes the Senate, which leaders hope could happen as soon as tomorrow, It will head to the House, where many Republicans have already expressed opposition. Pope Francis yesterday, during his Angelus address, prayed for fraught situations around the world and marked the World Day of the Sick, commemorated every year on the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. From Vatican Radio, Christopher Wells reports. We are all called to be close to those who suffer, Pope Francis said on Sunday, as he marked the World Day of the Sick. The Holy Father emphasized, as the day is observed, that it is not possible to keep silent about the fact that there are so many people today who are denied the right to care and therefore the right to life. Penso a quanti vivono in povertà estrema, ma penso anche ai territori di guerra. I am thinking, he said, of those living in extreme poverty, but I am also thinking of the territories of war. There, fundamental human rights are violated every day. It's intolerable. E intollerabile. Pope Francis then prayed for Ukraine, for Palestine and Israel. Preghiamo per la martorietta ucraina. La Palestina, Israel. And then renewed his prayers for Myanmar, nel Myanmar, where Rohingya Muslims, for whom the Holy Father prayed during his general audience on February 7th, continue to be subject to extreme violence and ethnic persecution. 
I'm Christopher Wells. The King of Jordan will be at the White House today to discuss the precarious situation in the Middle East with President Biden. It's Biden's first meeting with King Abdullah since three U.S. soldiers were killed in Jordan in a drone attack carried out by an Iranian-backed militia. The king will reportedly be asking Biden to continue pressuring Israel to contain its war against Hamas in the Gaza Strip, as well as to stop attacks by Israeli settlers on Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. Two people were injured and the shooter is dead following a shooting at Joel Osteen's mega church in Houston. The woman entered the church yesterday afternoon wearing a trench coat and backpack armed with what authorities called a long rifle and began shooting. Two off-duty officers engaged the suspect, striking her. She reportedly entered with a five-year-old child who was hit during the incident and is in critical condition. Another man was hit in the leg and is receiving treatment at a local hospital. It's currently unknown what the motive was or how the child was related to the shooter. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas has acknowledged the U.S. immigration system is broken and says it's up to Congress to pass legislation to get it fixed. More from Mark Mayfield. Speaking on NBC's Meet the Press, Mayorkas claimed Republicans didn't even read what was in the bipartisan Senate border bill before striking it down. House Republicans are accusing Mayorkas of breaking the law in his handling of the southern border. Another impeachment vote is expected this week after last week's vote failed in the House. Mayorkas calls Republicans' allegations baseless. I'm Mark Mayfield. And the Kansas City Chiefs are back-to-back Super Bowl champions. The Chiefs defended their title after coming from behind in overtime to beat the San Francisco 49ers 25-22 in Super Bowl 58 at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Patrick Mahomes was named Most Valuable Player for the third time in his career after finishing the game with 333 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. The Chiefs are the first team in the NFL to win back-to-back Super Bowls since the New England Patriots back in 2003 and 2004, 20 years ago. That's crazy. That feels it. That feels a lot more recent. So do you want to know then what uh, Archbishop Salvatore Cordelione is sending to Bishop James Johnson? No, that's in my news next time. Okay, so then I won't spoil it. Yeah, don't spoil it. I won't spoil it. Well, happy Shrove Monday, Anna Mitchell. Happy Shrove Monday, Matt. Did you stay up? I, okay, so I tried to stay up. I got through the first series of overtime and fell asleep on the couch and then Mm. woke up hearing somebody say that the Kansas City Chiefs had won. Well, I stayed up. You watched the whole thing? I watched the whole, I can't believe I watched the whole thing. Well, it was an exciting game. It was an exciting game. Very intense, well matched. I think it's clear that it was the two best teams. Yeah, I think you're right. But, uh, At least but for yeah. this year. Our Bengals will be back next year. Be Paul back. Lockman's wearing a Kansas City Royals hat today. Okay. That's subversive. Actually, you know why he's a... wearing it is because I believe pitchers and catchers report this week, Anna Mitchell. I'm so glad we can move on. I know. And get into the real spring training of the soul with Lent mm-hmm. with spring training of baseball in the background. It's nice. And then once That's Easter hits, we'll be all into the baseball season. Oh, my gosh. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm ready. We had spring-like weather here in Cincinnati we, we over the weekend, but it's it was just a fake spring. Mm. Winter, winter returns. More on that and weather in just a little bit here. Today is Monday, February the 12th. We are happy to have you along with us here on the Sunrise Morning Show on EWTN Radio. It's 8 past. It's time for our weekly look at This Week in Catholic History here on the Sunrise Morning Show. Our Catholic historian, Kevin Schmeezing, is back with us for it. He's author of A Catholic Pilgrimage Through American History from Ave Maria Press. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Anna. So we start in 1775 and the election of a new pope. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of papal history lately, so I figured I'd continue that little series and This week, we're looking at Pope Pius VI, who was elected this week in 1775. He was born Giovanni Brasci to a noble family in what was, at the time, the territory of the Papal States. He entered the service of the church at a young age, was made a cardinal by his predecessor, Clement XIV. Two years later, he was elected Pope. This week, February 15th, 1775. 
That was about two months before the battles of Lexington and Concord mm -hmm. began the American Revolution. And that's not completely irrelevant because it was Pius who would erect the Diocese of Baltimore in 1789. And also, the revolution in the British colonies is generally considered in various ways to have been one of the causes of the French Revolution of that same year of, eight, of 1789. And that was one of the major challenges that faced the pontificate of Pius VI. We've talked about various aspects of the conflict between church and state in France over the years. It was Pius VI who forbade priests from taking the oath of allegiance to the state, which resulted in a deep split in the French church. And more generally, the historically Catholic nations of Europe were increasingly at this time non-religious, if not anti-religious. The Austrian Emperor Joseph II was a case in point. Against Pius's objections, he asserted control over the church in various ways, such as suppressing monasteries. But Napoleon was even worse. He <laughs> occupied Rome in 1798, and when Pius refused to capitulate, he was seized by French forces and transported to France, and that's where he died in 1799. His pontificate was therefore 24 and a half years, making it the fifth longest in history. Pius VI, it began this week in 1775. And his successor didn't really have a great time of it either with Napoleon, did he? No, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. What a crazy, crazy time in, in Europe and in the church, really, or all around the world that uh, late 18th century. Now, let's move to the 19th century, 1826, and the approval of a new religious order. Yeah, you made allusion to Pope Pius VII, who mm -hmm. was Pius VI's successor. Well, Pius VII's successor was Leo XII, and he's the one who granted approval to an important missionary order, the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, this week in 1826. The Oblates were founded by St. Eugene de Mazenod. He was born into an aristocratic family in France in 1782. His family fled the country during, what else, the French Revolution. He lived in poverty in Italy throughout his childhood. Then the family recovered their fortune. Eugene returned to France at age 20. For a few years, he lived a worldly life, but after a radical conversion at age 25, he dedicated his life to the church, was ordained a priest in 1811. Five years later, he gathered a group of like-minded priests, and they formed the Missionary Oblates of Mary Immaculate, initially with the aim of reviving the faith in France. They were approved by the Pope this week, February 17, 1826. In 1841, they were invited to Canada, where they have been an important presence ever since, especially in the evangelization of the indigenous peoples in the vast northern territories. Difficult missionary work. They gradually spread to dozens of countries, including the United States. Some listeners probably remember Cardinal Francis George of Chicago. Yeah. He was an oblate. And the oblates also founded and continue to run the National Shrine of Our Lady of the Snows near St. Louis. Eugene Mazineau became a bishop in France, where he died in 1861. He was canonized by John Paul II in 1995. And his religious order, the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, had been approved by the Pope this week in 1826. Just goes to show you that out of those crazy times in France, such good can certainly come out of it because, of course, God works all things for the good. We've been talking to Kevin Schmeising. You can find his book, A Catholic Pilgrimage Through American History, as well as his Catholic History Trek podcast, linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Kevin, thanks. Thank you, Anna. You bet. All right, let's take a look at weather across the nation now. Severe thunderstorms likely today in Alabama, northern Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. Damaging winds and a few tornadoes are the primary threats this afternoon and evening. In areas like Tennessee, North Carolina, Kentucky, and Virginia, occasional rain showers and thunderstorms are possible throughout the day. From Oklahoma to Ohio, a mix of rain and snow will be taking place throughout the day. For most of Pennsylvania and southern New York, heavy snow will be falling beginning well after sunset. In the Pacific Northwest, a mix of rain and snow will fall from sunup to sundown at the higher elevations with some pockets of heavy snow in Glacier National Park, Montana, and portions of northern Idaho. All-day rain showers will stall along the Washington coastline east of the mountains. Some lingering snow showers are possible for the rest of Montana and western Wyoming. And areas of high pressure will dominate the rest of the nation, bringing dry and sunny weather for your Monday. 14 past now on the Sunrise Morning Show. We're back with headlines right after this.
Do you feel as though life is flying past you? Are you desperate for a way to find moments of peace and quiet? Lord, teach me to pray. The free Ignatian prayer series will open your heart to His voice, to the peace you're seeking, and the only love that fulfills the human heart, Jesus. God is calling you to true joy, knowing Jesus personally. Lord, Teach Me to Pray is free. Just go to lordteachmetopray.com and click on the red box. That's lordteachmetopray.com. Support for the Sunrise Morning Show is from Visiting Angels. Visiting Angels provides experienced, compassionate care to millions of aging adults nationwide by keeping them safe and healthy in the comfort of their own home. Whether it's a short break for caregivers or for long-term assistance, Visiting Angels provides hygiene, meals, light housework, companionship, and more. And services are available up to 24 hours per day. Visiting Angels, online at visitingangels.com. That's visitingangels.com. Franchise opportunities available. It's always harder to get out of bed when it's cold outside. So give yourself something to look forward to, like Mystic Monk Coffee for the first cup of the day. You can find a link to Mystic Monk Coffee at our site, sunrisemorningshow.com, and we earn a commission on anything you buy through that link. You can also treat yourself to a Sunrise Morning Show mug, which you can buy through our online store. Check out the mugs and link to Mystic Monk Coffee through sonrisemorningshow.com. That's sunrisemorningshow.com. EWTN Heavenly Hints. Need to wrap up a long-winded conversation in a Christian way? Instead of making up an excuse, how about saying, let's part in prayer today, where you offer up your words, said and unsaid, to your Savior. Or let's list five things we're grateful for before we say goodbye. Take delight in knowing God delights in you when you invite Him into your discussions with others. Give delight by sharing your trust in the eternal listener. A Heavenly Hint from EWTN. 16 minutes past the hour. Here's Anna with headlines. The Senate is moving forward with a $95 billion aid bill for Ukraine and Israel, though its fate in the House remains uncertain. Pope Francis yesterday, during his Angelus address, prayed for fraught situations around the world and marked the World Day of the Sick. And the Holy Father also yesterday canonized Argentina's first female saint. News at the top and bottom of each hour every weekday morning here on the Sunrise Morning Show. Well, it's not a saint feast day per se, but Anna Mitchell, I always like to point out on Shrove Monday, Mm -hmm. uh, the day before the day before Ash Wednesday, and the beginning of Lent, that uh, at least according to uh, a book that came out in 1849, and I feel like this is pretty reliable, and Stephanie Mann can confirm this, uh, that... In the pre-Reformation days in England, you know that what Tuesday book is- was this? I don't know that you've ever given me the particular citation of this. Oh, this I'm, is John- I'm pros to. I, I mean, I'm I'm prone to believe this, but I I want to know the title of well, the book. Well, specific the specific passage I'm going to read comes from John Brand's Observations on the Popular Antiquities of Great Britain, Britain chiefly illustrating the origin of, of our vulgar and provincial customs, oh, okay, ceremonies, got it. and superstitions. Okay, great. Uh, came out in 1849. Wait. Uh, but he talks about how in the north of England, the Monday preceding Shrove Tuesday, or Pancake Tuesday, mm-hmm. is called Collop Monday. Right. Eggs and collops compose a usual dish at dinner, as pancakes do on the following day. And uh, it says here, uh, on Collop Monday, they, the Catholics took their leave of flesh in the papal times, meaning pre-Reformation. Mm-hmm. And uh, slices of this kind of meat, uh, these collops, were prepared to last during the winter by salting, drying, and being hung up. Uh, they're co- termed collops in the north, uh, steaks when cut off fresher and salted. A writer in the Gentleman's Magazine asserts, I don't know which Gentleman's Magazine, it says, asserts that most places in England have eggs and collops, a.k.a. slices of bacon, on mm-hmm. Shrove Monday. So, happy Bacon Monday right, to all who observe. What was the name of this book again? So this is an anti-Catholic book that you're reading from? No, it's just an English history book about uh, superstitions, customs, ceremonies, and superstitions. It says the origin have... of our vulgar and provincial customs, ceremonies, and superstitions. Do you have any other passages from this? Yeah, you can get the book? whole thing on Google Books. Really? Yeah. Just curious what else they say. Do they have anything to say about Pancake Tuesday? Oh well, okay, actually. This is interesting. In an old English ballad, the lasses are directed to pray cross-legged to St. Valentine for good luck. 
In some parts of England, the poorer classes of children array themselves fantastically and visit the houses of the wealthy, singing, Good morning to you, Valentine. Curl your locks as I do mine. Two before and three behind. Good morrow to you, Valentine. I don't know that I'm going to do that one. I'm going to stick with Bacon Monday and not not, uh, go tell my kid to go knock on the doors of the houses of the wealthy and sing them a Valentine song. So it's like Halloween except in February. Except Valentine. It's Valloween. 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 Well, I don't know how many kids are doing, like my kids are doing Valentine's Day tomorrow because they don't want to interfere with Ash Wednesday. Yeah. So I don't know about other kids. But what if you just treated Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day like as the same kind of thing and you got creative? What would you do? I give don't know. people You would just You can't I mean, give treats. Marriage is a it sacrifice. It feels weird that well, I'm talking about school kids. It feels oh, weird kids. to like what meatless penitential item would you give children as a treat with the valentine you don't have to give them a treat just give them a piece of paper with a picture on it and like you write on the back of it in my day anna mitchell you used to have to write the name of who the valentine was to on the back of the card these days i just think that they write who it's from well yeah because it takes forever to go around and pass out the valentines to each particular person yeah. By the way, imagine? Ken Craycraft just texted me to remind me, and I, I should have brought this up, that vulgar in this does not mean rude or inappropriate. It just means of the common folk. Well, sure. Like but when Jerome wrote The Vulgate, he wrote it for normal people to language. understand and read. Yeah. The common language. But it still says superstitions in that We are title, a vulgar show, so Anna Mitchell. We're for the common people. We're for the common man. Absolutely. 21 days. I'm Father Rob Jack. Join me this afternoon for Driving Home the Faith, where Monsignor Peter Vacari will discuss the Catholic Near East Welfare Society. Dr. Jerry Creek will talk about his new book on anxiety entitled Litanies of the Heart. I'll speak about the Feast of Our Lady of Lords with frequent traffic and weather. That's this afternoon beginning at 4 on Sacred Heart Radio. You're on the road to Christ the King. Driving home the faith. Support is from MediShare. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that is MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save many families up to 500 bucks a month, and that is huge. But it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The member satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works, too. It's been around for 30 years. Members have shared more than $5 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, really, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want to plan you're happy with. You can call right now. You'll get a price within two minutes. So see what you can say. This is a very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. Call 877-64-BIBLE. That's 877-64-BIBLE. 877-64-BIBLE. All are precious in God's sight, no matter our age, race, ability, or residence. Yet many lives are threatened, especially in the womb. Cincinnati Right to Life works to protect the good gift of life at every age and every stage. For more information, go to Cincinnati Right to Life. Water damage in your home or business? Plumbing and flooding problems not repaired and restored can quickly get worse over time. Rainbow International of Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, can help. Rainbow International, 513-271-1000. The Sunrise Morning Show continues on this Monday, the 12th of February. Glad that you are along to share a little bit of the the last bit of ordinary time with us. I'm Matt Swaim, joined now by Father Patrick Briscoe, editor of Our Sunday Visitor, to look at some faith themes from the Super Bowl yesterday. Father Briscoe, good morning. Hey, good morning, Matt. Great to be with you. Uh, So I don't know where to start here. There's a lot uh, in terms of some of the things that I noticed from the game yesterday that uh, triggered my Catholic spidey sense uh, and pointed to things of faith. I don't know, know if you've noticed, but like in the pregame show, every year now for several years, the Church of Scientology runs a commercial like an hour and a half before the game. Do you catch that one? 
That's really interesting. No, we the, we Dominicans, we haven't tuned in yet because we're busy praying Vespers still. So. Well, you're better <laughs> off. I can tell you that. Seven hours of pregame is a bit much <laughs> for, for the Super Bowl. Uh, but I think uh, it's fascinating. I didn't get to catch the Hallow ad. Uh, for some reason, I missed it. Uh, did you see it and uh, and get a get a take on it? Yeah, we did, and it got a lot of cheers. You know, it was uh, it was it, the thing that I was really interested to see is, uh, you know, I live with a, a room full of extremely critical priests as part of being a Dominican friar, and <laughs> and one one never knows what what they're going to get really excited about. But uh, but definitely there was a, there was a lot of enthusiasm f- for Hallow, uh, in part just because I think there's so much cultural vision toward Lent. Lent resonates with us as Catholics. Uh, and people have seen how we've observed Lent, and that that has a real power in the culture. Um, so, so the Hallow ad was appreciated. I... Yeah, there were and there were a couple of others. Uh, there's one I want to get to in a moment, but I noticed at least a couple of ads that were really trying to strike back at the anti-Semitic stuff that's been going on in the culture. A, a, a couple of different ones uh, that really spoke out against the hatred that some of our Jewish and bro- brothers and sisters. Uh, have been experiencing, and you know, it was a little bit surprising for me to see. I, I believe I saw two two ads like that. Yes, and uh, we we saw them both as as well. And our house was similarly surprised. Um, not not because we don't think the theme needs that kind of attention, but but we were glad to see it out there. And the spokespeople were very interesting for those ads. I would say as well. Yeah, one of them was one of Martin Luther King Jr.'s speechwriters. Exactly. Yeah, that was very. That that was very overwhelming. It was a very powerful narrative, and I think it was very effective. Honestly, uh, yeah, that I think so that too. commercial that commercial because of the, the person they used, you know, as you say, MLK's former speechwriter, really drew the connection to say that we're not talking about an ideological thing here. We're talking about a kind of hatred that really consumes people, and that's what anti-Semitism is, and that's why we should never hesitate to condemn it as a grave evil. Yeah, I, I don't don't think I knew exactly where the ad was going until the very end uh, when they said, okay, and because of all these things, because we understand, you know, what a human being is and, and, and all this, that the, the, the punchline was like, so stop anti-Semitism. So, yeah, it was, it was fascinating. But, of course, uh, the, the ones that have gotten attention for the past couple of years, of course, the He Gets Us campaign, and uh, I, have a, I have a few different thoughts on this. I'm curious what the Dominicans had to say about the He Gets Us ads. Yeah, those honestly uh, were not huge hits in our house. They weren't a huge and, hit for uh, me either, and I, I'm curious as to why they weren't a huge hit for you. Yeah, so I would say so. So one of the things that I I think is really difficult is just the the simple idea that they're after, and I I think I understand why the supporters want to approach this, but the the message ends up being not powerful enough. I'm simply saying, you know, Jesus isn't for hate doesn't actually communicate the kinds of things that, that Christians are for or that or that Jesus is for. Now, some of the images were very beautiful. Uh, I'm thinking of the longer spot in particular um, of the, the foot, foot washing, washing one. Um, yeah, for example, the, the young woman outside the pregnancy clinic, um, the, the family planning clinic is what the building actually said, but uh, but it, it's clear that that's that was a reference to to abortion and to um, to supporting women in their their time of need. She she looked very young, um. So so some of the images were were quite powerful, but I think the ultimate message um, wasn't actually strong enough. It was it was it was presented in such a way that it sounded more like the resonant culture than the gospel. Well, I think uh, for me, one of the I mean, there's there's not a uh, there's not a verse in. Uh... First John that says God is not hate, but there is a verse in First John that says God is love, <laughs> right? And, <laughs> right? Right. And I think that the the punchline, um, you know, was not for me. It was just like, well, you know, Christians at least stop hating people, right? It seemed like that was kind of the message, and, and that was a little dissatisfying for me. But I think also, uh, well, it was clearly evangelical because you know I have like evangelical. I, I understand the evangelical accent a little bit, the dialect, and you know their understanding of what Jesus did when he was washing the feet is a little bit different than how Catholics understand the washing the feet. But because for um, for evangelicals, it's a general metaphor for service and love of neighbor, but in Catholicism, it's actually a preparation for ordination to the priesthood. <laughs> so it's a kind of a different right. sort of thing. 
uh, in right. evangelical and Catholic circles. One of the brothers said to me, uh, it's not a Holy Thursday yet. What are we doing? <laughs> My actual objection, and this goes into my last question, is that it seemed as though all the art in those ads were was actually uh, AI generated, and there were a couple of ads that promoted uh, AI and uh, almost as like a substitute for for actual work, and that to me is is a little bit bothersome from a practical uh, perspective, but also from a theological perspective. And I don't know yeah, if you got any reactions in your world to that, but that yeah. was something that was rolling in my mind. The dean of our school shouted out, do your own homework, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we are meant to be participations, uh, participants in uh, the co-creative activity with God and uh, not leave all the work to the robots. Well, if our listeners want to get uh, connected with you, we've got our sundayvisitor.com linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Father Briscoe, looking forward to some of you Dominicans writing up some more uh, postmortems on the Super Bowl. <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a great day. Again, you can find him and all of our guests linked in the show notes. Easy to find right there at sunrisemorningshow.com. It's half past the hour. Here's Anna with news. Good morning. The Senate is moving forward with a $95 billion aid bill for Ukraine and Israel, though its fate in the House is uncertain. The money, which is for Ukraine's defense against Russian invasion and for Israeli security assistance passed a Senate procedural vote with the help of 18 Republicans in a rare Sunday session. If the bill passes the Senate, which leaders hope could happen as soon as tomorrow, it will head to the House where many Republicans have already expressed opposition. Pope Francis yesterday during his Angelus address prayed again for fraught situations around the world, including in Ukraine and the Holy Land as well as for Myanmar. He did so as he promoted the World Day of the Sick on the Feast of Our Lady of Lord. He said, it is not possible to keep silent, saying about the fact that there are so many people today who are denied the right to care and therefore the right to life. He said, I am thinking of those living in extreme poverty, but I am also thinking of the territories of war. Their fundamental human rights are violated every day. It is intolerable. End quote. In his catechesis, the Holy Father reflected on the Sunday Gospel reading, encouraging the faithful to convert every day to the loving, compassionate God that Jesus presents to us in the Gospel. From Vatican Radio, Lisa Zingarini reports. Pope Francis remembered that the Gospel of the Well, that's not going to work. We'll try to get back to that in just a second. The Holy Father also yesterday canonized Argentina's first female saint, the Argentinian Pope, raised to the altars, now Saint Maria Antonia de San Jose, known as Mama Antula. In his homily, the Holy Father said, quote, when the Jesuits were expelled from Argentina, the spirit lit a missionary flame in her based on trust in providence and perseverance. He said she was a wayfarer of the spirit. She traveled thousands of kilometers on foot, crossing deserts and taking dangerous paths, bringing God with her. He said today she is a model of apostolic fervor and audacity for us. Now back to his Angelus address, the Holy Father reflecting on the Sunday gospel of Jesus curing the leper. Here's Lisa Zingarini. Pope Francis remembered that the gospel on the healing of the leper offers us an example of Jesus' style with those who suffer, few words and concrete actions. The Pope recalled that we see Jesus behave like this several other times in the gospel when he heals the deaf and dumb, the paralyzed and many other needy people. He always does this. He speaks little and promptly follows his words with action, said the Pope. But Francis went on to note that we can meet his wonderful way of loving also in some people we encounter in our lives, generous in action, reluctant to show off, but ready to be helpful, friends to whom we can ask for help. This concreteness, the Pope remarked, is even more important today in a world where an evanescent virtuality of relationships seem to be increasingly prevalent. 
ha bisogno di concretezza. Love cannot be reduced to nice words, images on a screen, selfies or hasty messages, the Pope said. These may be useful tools, but they are not enough for love. They cannot replace concrete presence. Pope Francis therefore invited the faithful to ask themselves if they are able to listen to people and make themselves available to meet their needs or instead make excuses and hide behind abstract and useless words. I am Lisa Zingarini. Two people were injured and the shooter is dead following a shooting at Joel Osteen's mega church in Houston. The woman entered the church yesterday afternoon wearing a trench coat and backpack armed with what authorities called a long rifle and began shooting. Two off-duty officers then engaged the suspect, striking her. She reportedly entered with a five-year-old child who was hit during the incident and is in critical condition. And the Kansas City Chiefs are back-to-back Super Bowl champions. The Chiefs defended their title, beating the 49ers 25-22 to in overtime in Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. That's the news. It's 35 minutes past the hour. Looking for a parish program any layperson can start? The Purgatorial Society and Parish Rosary Program are easy and effective. To find out more, call Patrick at 269-963-8484. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Treating customers with integrity for over 90 years for heating, air conditioning, water heaters, plumbing, and more. Schneller Knockelman at skpha.com. SKPHA.com. For over 50 years, the St. Martin District of St. Vincent de Paul has been providing food, clothing, rent, and utility assistance to people in six counties of Southern Ohio. You can join the St. Martin District of St. Vincent de Paul in helping our neighbors with a monetary or vehicle donation, which is simple and easy. 800 322 8284 or donate online at run for the poor.org. It's 24 minutes before the hour on this Friday, February the 9th. Your forecast is brought to you on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio by Schneller Nockman Plumbing, Heating, and Air online at skpha.com. Getting even warmer today, and it's rather warm outside right now with temperatures in the lower 50s as you're heading out the door. For Cincinnati, mostly cloudy skies today, an isolated evening rain chance and a high of 62. Some scattered showers and a few downpours possible tonight with an overnight low of 54. Rain ends early tomorrow, then it'll be mostly cloudy and mild with a high of 60 degrees. For the Miami Valley Dayton area, cloudy early, then partly cloudy this afternoon with a high of 62. Increasing clouds with showers late tonight and an overnight low of 50. Rain showers early, then decreasing clouds later in the day and a high tomorrow of 57 degrees. This is Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. It's 37 minutes past the hour. You're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Happy to have you along with us on a Monday morning. Thanks for joining us. Father John Gavin back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show. He is author of Mysteries of the Lord's Prayer, Wisdom from the Early Church. Good morning, Father. Good morning. So I don't remember how long ago we actually started this series of ours looking at the fathers of the church quoted in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, but all this time— We have been in part one of the catechism, which goes through the creed, you know, the basics of the faith. And now we are coming to the end of part one on the profession of faith. And there's a whole section devoted to the word amen. Why is that? Well, I, I really, I think it's wonderful how it ends the section this way, because, of course, we use this word very often as Catholics, uh, in the celebration of the Mass, in our prayer, and perhaps we never think about what it actually means. Yeah. And as the section begins by, uh, it begins by telling us that, in fact, the Hebrew root for the word amen uh, is to believe or to affirm as true. And mm-hmm. so what we are saying here is 
all that has been stated in our faith, in, uh, in the liturgy, is true. It, we affirm it as coming from God, uh, our trust in God, and then in turn, uh, the great trust that God places in us in giving us these truths and these gifts of the faith. And so now we're going to look at a St. Augustine quote in uh, paragraph 1064, and it reads thus. Thus, the finals, sorry, let me start that over again. <laughs> Thus, the creed's final amen repeats and confirms its words, I believe. To believe is to say amen to God's words, promises, and commandments, to entrust oneself completely to him who is the amen of infinite love and perfect faithfulness. The Christian's everyday life will then be the amen to the I believe of our baptismal profession of faith. And here the quote from St. Augustine. May your creed be for you as a mirror. Look at yourself in it to see if you believe everything you say you believe and rejoice in your faith each day. Mm. And it's a beautiful quote. Where does it come from? So this comes from uh, Sermon 58 by St. Augustine. And for me, it's, it's uh, visiting an old friend because mm -hmm. this is a sermon that Augustine gave the week before the Easter Vigil oh. uh, to catechumens, and it's on the Our Father. Mm -hmm. So he's going through the uh, Lord's Prayer in the church in Hippo. This was part of your formation for baptism. The week before, you would have instruction on the Our Father. And then the next week at the Easter Vigil, you would perform what is called the traditio symboli, the handing over of the creed. You would have to uh, repeat it back as part of your baptismal rite. And uh, this comes from the end of that sermon. And in it, Augustine is speaking to the catechumens. And he, on the one hand, he's giving them a little homework here. He says, you've got to have this down by next week, the creed. And he says, but when you have the creed by heart, say it every day so as not to forget it. When you get up, when you go to sleep, give it back, give back your creed, give it to the Lord. Uh, he's playing on the word uh, tradere, traditio, to hand back. Mm -hmm. And that's where he moves into this point, call, your, uh, call to fa your faith to mind, look at yourself, treat your creed as your own personal mirror. And he's encouraging them, yes, you're going to repeat it back, but also uh, the creed shouldn't just be rote words that you recite, but it should actually be formative in your life. Uh, it becomes, in a way, a mirror by which you see yourself, the Church, and your relationship with God. Wow. <laughs> I mean, to, to hear those words, I mean, presumably he's talking, I mean, obviously he's talking to the catechumens, as you were saying, but mm. presumably uh, those who are already baptized in, in the church in full mm. communion, they're listening as well. Um, what if we recited the creed and thought of it as formation for my life, as opposed to mm. just a prayer that I say, I don't know, before, I mean, I say it every day before the rosary, or as I'm beginning mm -hmm. the, the the recitation of the rosary, or when we say it at church, and how often we can even just lose our train of thought in those, those moments, um, even at Mass, Father. Absolutely, and that's where this, the, the word amen should awaken us to this, right? Uh, when we conclude to this or any prayer with amen, we're saying all that we have received here in the creed, we affirm as trustworthy and coming from God. And it's a communal outcry, especially in the liturgy, right? Uh, we're all saying this together. We are all saying we believe this is true. But you're right, uh, it should awaken us within us a, a new kind, a new stance in the way we see ourselves and our relationship to God. Any one of the points of the creed should awaken us to that, uh, especially in the affirmation of the Trinity that so shapes the creed, right? Mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Spirit. And Augustine wants the catechumens, and you're right, everyone there, to really begin to see in this mirror of the creed how they relate to God and God's love outpouring from Father, Son, and Spirit. 
and how the church relates to God. The whole church is praying this, but they also want us to see uh, the world. He wants to see the world through these, this mirror, uh, our neighbor and all brought into this love, invitation to share in this outpouring of God's love and life. Why is the creed part of Mass? Why do we pray that every Mass? Well, in every Mass, of course, we are gathered uh, as a church, as a community, uh, in the body of Christ. And, of course, we are to receive the body of Christ. But also, uh, we are formed by those core beliefs uh, that have been forged by through the Holy Spirit in the life of the Church. And so as a community and as a communion, uh, before we receive the Eucharist, obviously, uh, we are making that statement, Amen, uh, to the truths that form us, that come from uh, this formative participation in the Eucharist. So it's, it's a way in which we see ourselves as a body of the body of Christ before we receive the body and blood of Christ. Well, yeah, I mean, gosh, as you put it that way, that is a, an important moment for us as we're about to say that we enter into communion. If we're going up to the Eucharist, mm -hmm. then we better be thinking about the truths of the faith that and make sure that we are very firmly set in the body of Christ before we go up to present ourselves for Holy Communion. Absolutely, and in a way we can see the entire creed as an amen, yeah. right? Uh, we are saying amen to the Eucharist. Uh, we are saying amen to this incredible gift that we are receiving in the body and blood of our Lord. And so that entire statement in the way Augustine wants to be, that great yes, I believe. Mm. And it puts us in communion with someone like St. Augustine. Yes, exactly. Uh, we can see the communion of saints uh, stretching all the way backward and into uh, uh, the dead who now share in that beatific vision of our Lord. Uh, it is one great amen. Is this sermon from St. Augustine um, easily found, like online, for instance, if someone wanted to read the whole thing? It's, it's interesting. You, um, the, the sermons have since been renumbered based on some later discoveries. So there are copies of some of uh, Augustine's sermons online, but you might not find it under this number. Oh, okay. So you'd have to look at more modern editions to get uh, Sermon 58. But uh, there are, for instance, uh, New Advent has a collection on there of 19th century translations, but the, the, the numbering will be different. Okay. Well, folks can go check this out. It sounds like it would be really good reading for the Lenten season, perhaps. Absolutely. I, I, would, I would very much agree. All right. Well, Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Thank you so much, Father John Gavin. We've got Mysteries of the Lord's Prayer, which would also be some good Lenten reading, linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Father, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless. You too, Father. Thanks. All right. It is 13 till. We're back right after this with Father Sebastian Walsh. Support is from MediShare. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that is MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save many families up to 500 bucks a month, and that is huge. But it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The member satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works, too. It's been around for 30 years. Members have shared more than $5 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, really, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want to plan you're happy with, you can call right now. You'll get a price within two minutes. So see what you can say. This is a very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. Call 877-64-BIBLE. That's 877-64-BIBLE. 877-64-BIBLE. Business owners are starting to think outside the box to find new customers. You can reach millions of engaged Catholic listeners by underwriting The Sunrise Morning Show. Each weekday morning, listeners across the U.S. and around the globe can hear your message for your business, ministry, or nonprofit on The Sunrise Morning Show. To find out how it works, email me, Leah, at sacredheartradio.com. That's Leah at sacredheartradio.com. 
The Honest to God podcast engages listeners with open, honest conversations, offering a Catholic perspective to inspire young adults to take another step on their faith journey towards Jesus. You can hear Honest to God as well as faith-filled podcasts from our friends and affiliates around the world, all in one place all free at EWTN Podcast Central. Visit EWTN.com slash radio and click Podcast Central today. Hi, this is Janet Williams. Please join us for Women of Grace today at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on EWTN Radio. Wipe that sleep out of your eyes and now back to the Sunrise Morning Show. The Sunrise Morning Show continues. I'm Matt Swaim, and it's been great to go through this book of uh, Father Sebastian Walsh's on the Beatitudes uh, called Heart of the Gospel, How the Beatitudes Show Us God's Plan for Happiness. Father Sebastian, good morning. Good morning. All right, so we've asked this of a few different people in religious orders uh, because, you know, Annie and me and Paul Lockman and the crew, we all— decide we're going to give up X or Y or Z for Lent. <laughs> when it comes to you living in community uh, with a religious order, is this something that you think about how to do together or something that you receive from your superior? How do you undergo what Lenten practices you're going to take up uh, as a vowed well, religious? Yes. Well, there's, um, there's really uh, three different things that happen with regard to our Lenten practices. The first is that as a community, we rededicate ourselves to the penances that we do all year. And those are the, the penances described in the rule and what we call our canonry book of customs. So we have annually throughout the entire year uh, a rule with regard to penances that's sometimes um, in certain times of the year, those penances are lighter, for example, the Easter season and the summertime. And other times of the year, those penances are um Heavier, for example, during uh, Lent and Advent, which are penitential seasons. So we already have that written into our rule of life and into our um, book of customs for community. Then the next thing that happens is that each confrere, each member of the community, speaks to his or her spiritual director, right? So we have Norbertine nuns, so they speak to their spiritual directors. We have Norbertine priests, we speak to our spiritual directors. And then we try to um, uh, form our own private or personal um, plan or program for penance during Lent. And, um, and it's, it's usually got three parts. You've got um, prayers, extra prayers you do. For example, one of the things that I do each Lent is I do Stations of the Cross each day. And then you've got um, additional penances, you know, abstinence from different types of food or um, fasting or things like that, um, cold showers, things like that. And then finally, um, works of mercy. Um, and, and that can take all sorts of forms, but there's, um, you know, those are the three things that, that each conference would generally focus on with the spiritual director to get his own personal or private additional penances during the season. And then finally, there's something called chapter of faults. And uh, that's a, uh, a meeting where the community comes together, where we confess our faults, the times we haven't kept the rule, etc. And then the abbot will give a community penance, which tends to be a fairly small thing. For example, he'll give out a list of the names of all the confreres, and he'll say, please pray for each one of them by name over Lent or something. So we actually have these three different ways that we sort of put together a program for penance over Lent. Well, I hope you don't mind if I just go back to the cold showers for a minute. Is that a sort of a historic <laughs> traditional penance or something that's come along recently? Uh, yeah, I think, well, first of all, there wasn't hot showers until recently. I mean, That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking about recently, meaning, you know, in the last hundred years or something like that. But, yeah, hot showers weren't something that um, religious ever did, you know. Um, St. Augustine has an interesting part of his rule. He says that um, he says that you should bathe— as necessary for health, you know, in our day and age, that means every day, obviously, but the, um, um, but obviously bathing was uh, more of a luxury back in, uh, you know, earlier times. Now we have, you know, everything works perfectly well. So I would say it's a relatively recent innovation, um, but it's not what everyone does. Some people do that. Some people do other things. It's not actually part of our constitution. 
Well, some of us with kids know it's sometimes a struggle to get them to take baths on Sundays and holy days of obligation. So, I mean, <laughs> be tough. I was just wondering if the uh, the practice of Norbertines uh, doing cold showers precedes and pre uh, exists uh, the Exodus ninety wave that has come through in the past few years. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure it does. I'm pretty sure it does. <laughs> I should think so. Norbertines have been around a very long time. Well, when it comes to this idea, I, I mean, obviously, this is what you do in your community, and I'm not in one of those kinds of communities, but I am in a community, Father. Uh, it's involving my spouse and offspring, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I live in that kind of a world. I wonder uh, what recommendations that you've seen beneficial in a religious order that you might recommend if you want to help a family better understand, like how might they enter in together into Lent? Yes. Well, okay, as in a religious community, so in a family, the primary rule of penance um, is is charity, okay? And that means that, you know, I always tell people who are under my spiritual care, um, for example, Fast up to the level of your charity, meaning this. If you're fasting so much that you're mean to people, stop fasting. (laughs) You know, the the, the most important thing to do is over the course of um, Lent um, is to show sacrificial Christ-like love to every member of your family. And, and, um, you know, the penances can be woven into that. You know, for example, if you have a tendency to, you know, talk over your wife when you're when you're both talking to each other, something like that. Like, restrain your words. You know, listen to her more. If you have a tendency to get you know excessively, you know, um, um, bossy with your kids or something like that, you know, then be more patient and things like that. So your penances could sometimes weave into. In fact, they're done best if they um, immediately contribute in some way to the good of the family at your personal expense, you know? So, um, yeah, the whole, the whole point of penance is not to suffer. The point of penance is to be free from undue attachments to creatures so that your heart is free to attach to God and to your neighbor in love. Yeah, as our dear friend here on the radio, Dr. Kevin Vost, used to always say, uh, the purpose of all these things is not to just, like, refine your skills, right? It's to become a dynamo for charity. So mm-hmm. uh, it's a wonderful thing to reflect upon. And hopefully, you know, the Church calls us to do this all together. Uh, we're not supposed to be doing it as individuals all living in the same house. I mean, if we're doing it as a church family, might as well do it as a regular family, too. Something that helps us all grow together over the season of Lent. Father Sebastian Walsh. Some great insights this morning. Really appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. God bless you and all your listeners. And, of course, you can find a link to Father Sebastian Walsh and all of our guests if you go to sunrisemorningshow.com. If you go to the show notes, not only can you watch the live stream of our show on Facebook and YouTube, but you can also get some downloadables that encourage people to switch to Catholic Radio for Lent. Some, uh posters and cards you can print out we're back with another full hour right after this it's three till ryan lopez here you know there are many listeners who generously give monthly to sacred heart radio their gifts range from five dollars per month to 150 dollars per month and even more now sacred heart radio is part of your daily life and you have never made a donation we invite you to prayerfully consider what you can give to help us maintain our seven media platforms that makes Sacred Heart Radio part of other people's lives. So, to make your generous gift, please visit sacredheartradio.com and click Donate. Thank you. Pregnancy Center West is committed to protecting the unborn by encouraging women to see and choose the beauty of life while offering practical assistance for them and their families. Donate securely online at supportpcw.org. That's supportpcw.org. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Twin Dental of Cincinnati. Since 1986, twin brothers, doctors David and Michael Rothen, have been providing superior dental care in a relaxed and comfortable setting for the entire family. The twin dental doctors utilize advanced dentistry techniques from sedation to implants and the latest in cosmetic options to preserve and beautify smiles. Twin Dental, located just off 
off the I-275 exit at Hamilton Avenue. For a complimentary evaluation, 513-825-6111 and online at twindental.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Hoding Realtors. Trusted and recommended by generations of families to sell their homes. Licensed in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. Hoting Realtors, 513-451-4800 and at hoting.com. Looking for a way to grow closer to your faith with your family this summer? Try a Holy Family Fast at Catholic Family Land, located 20 minutes from Steubenville, Ohio. Family activities along with mass, rosary, confession, and guest speakers create the perfect blend of excitement and ample time spent renewing your faith to allow life-changing encounters with the Lord. Financial assistance is available for families in need. Register online at afc.org. Support is from Solidarity HealthShare. Is inflation making you feel frustrated and out of control when it comes to your expenses? We have a solution. It's Solidarity HealthShare. With Solidarity HealthShare, you control what doctors you go to and how much you spend with pricing options that start as low as $384 for families. Take control of your health care and your budget with Solidarity HealthShare. 855-954-5688. Solidarity HealthShare. 855-954-5688. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Trinity Church Supply, providing church supplies and religious gifts worldwide. From Catholic greeting cards, books, and willow tree to sterling silver medals, rosary, sacramental gifts, and statues. Trinity Church Supply, 5479 North Bend Road. I'm Father Ronald Haft from Our Lady of Divine Providence Family of Parishes. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. It's a new day. Hear his word. Let us pray. The sunrise morning show. What a way to start your day. We continue on this Monday, the 12th of February, with a prayer written by St. Clement of Alexandria in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, may we all live in the peace that comes from you. May we journey toward your city, sailing through the waters of sin, untouched by the waves, borne tranquilly along by the Holy Spirit, your wisdom beyond all telling. Night and day until the last day of all, may our praises give you thanks, and may our thanksgiving praise you, you who alone are both Father and Son, Son and Father, the Son who is our tutor and teacher, together with the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It's a better way to start a Monday. Some of y'all were up late last night watching a big game, but uh, we got we got our own big game, our own thing to prep for, get in physical and mental and spiritual shape for, and that's Lent, which starts the day after tomorrow. It is Bacon Monday. We'll talk more about that as the morning continues. I'm Matt Swaim. Anna Mitchell has news. Paul Lockman at the controls. Travis has a video feed up and running. You can check it out. It's in the show notes at sunrisemorningshow.com. Up this hour, Teresa Tamio will have some thoughts on the Super Bowl, that which she saw of it. I think she also probably missed some because she, like us, has to get up early. Brendan Hodge will discuss state funding in Catholic schools. He joins us from the Pillar. Bear Wozniak has some more thoughts on rules for manliness this morning. And then Stephanie Mann with English Catholic history uh, tidbits. So please do stay with us if you can. Right now it is two minutes past. News of service of Central Fabricators and centralfabricators.com. Here's Anna Mitchell. Good morning. The Senate is moving forward with a $95 billion aid bill for Ukraine and Israel, but its fate in the House is uncertain. The money, which is for Ukraine's defense against the Russian invasion and for Israeli security assistance, passed a Senate procedural vote with the help of 18 Republicans in a rare Sunday session. If the bill passes the Senate, which leaders hope could happen as soon as tomorrow, It will head to the House, where many Republicans have expressed opposition. Pope Francis yesterday, during his Angelus address, marked the World Day of the Sick, commemorated every year on the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. 
From Vatican Radio, Christopher Wells reports. Siamo tutti chiamati a farci prossimo a chi soffre. We are all called to be close to those who suffer, Pope Francis said on Sunday, as he marked the World Day of the Sick. The Holy Father emphasized, as the day is observed, that it is not possible to keep silent about the fact that there are so many people today who are denied the right to care and therefore the right to life. Penso a quanti vivono in povertà estrema, ma penso anche ai territori di guerra. I am thinking, he said, of those living in extreme poverty, but I am also thinking of the territories of war. There, fundamental human rights are violated every day. It's intolerable. Intolerabile. Pope Francis then prayed for Ukraine, for Palestine and Israel. Preghiamo per la martorietta ucraina, per la Palestina e Israele. And then renewed his prayers for Myanmar. Preghiamo nel Myanmar. Where Rohingya Muslims, for whom the Holy Father prayed during his general audience on February 7th, continue to be subject to extreme violence and ethnic persecution. I'm Christopher Wells. The King of Jordan will be at the White House today to discuss the precarious situation in the Middle East with President Biden. It'll be Biden's first meeting with King Abdullah since three U.S. soldiers were killed in Jordan in a drone attack carried out by an Iranian-backed militia. The king will reportedly be asking Biden to continue to pressure Israel to contain its war against Hamas in the Gaza Strip, as well as to stop attacks by Israeli settlers on Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. Two people were injured and the shooter is dead following a shooting at Joel Osteen's megachurch in Houston yesterday. The woman entered the church yesterday afternoon wearing a trench coat and backpack and armed with what authorities called a long rifle and began shooting. Two off-duty officers engaged the suspect, striking her. She reportedly entered with a five-year-old child who was hit during the incident and is in critical condition. Another man was hit in the leg and is receiving treatment from a local hospital. It is currently unknown what the motive was or how the child was related to the shooter. A new poll finds most Americans feel President Biden is too old to serve. Mark Mayfield reports. The ABC News Ipsos poll was taken after a special counsel's report cited Biden's memory lapses. It found that 86 percent believe he's too old for the White House. The 81-year-old is the oldest president to run for re-election. Former President Trump, the GOP frontrunner, is 77. Overall, the poll found that nearly 60 percent of Americans believe that both men are too old for the office. I'm Mark Mayfield. And the Kansas City Chiefs are now back-to-back Super Bowl champions. The Chiefs defended their title after coming from behind in overtime to beat the San Francisco 49ers 25-22 to in Super Bowl 58 at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Patrick Mahomes was named most valuable player for the third time in his career. And as a result... Archbishop Salvatore Cordiglione of San Francisco will be sending a pack of rice a to Bishop James Johnston of Kansas City, St. Joseph, and also be supporting a pregnancy center in the diocese as well. rice a the San Francisco treat. There you go. That's what you get when you lose on Jeopardy. Is it? Yeah, I lost on Jeopardy. You know that? Like, uh, I mean, that's that's one of those consolation prizes. If you win, mm. you get all kinds of fun stuff. But if you lose, you get a copy of our home game and rice a the San Francisco treat. I didn't remember that. You sure You're it was young. Jeopardy? It was Jeopardy? Really? I feel like it was Jeopardy. Huh. Hmm. I might just be re- hmm. remembering the Weird Al song, I Lost on Jeopardy, and uh, the things that Don Pardo says in that particular song that reference mm. the home game and and the rice roni But yeah. I do remember rice roni being involved in Jeopardy. Like, for some reason, rice roni and Jeopardy are, are intrinsically linked in my mind. <laughs> I don't know. That's what advertising will do to your brain, Anna Mitchell. I guess. Teresa Tamio now joining us from EWTN and Ave Maria Radio's Catholic Connection. Am I, am I, am I crazy? Like, didn't they give out rice roni was Rice Aroni like a promo partner of Jeopardy for like the. I don't know about that, but I will tell you that this is kind of scary because I remember the actual Rice Aroni in the San Francisco Treat commercial. So. <laughs> I do too. 
I do too. So I'm going way back, but I was I don't really usually watch Jeopardy. My mom loved it. She used to watch it a lot, but I don't know. That's a good question. I was not familiar with the Rice Roney connection with Jeopardy. Well, I'm older than I seem. I'm uh, I'm 44 years old. Oh, uh, you're Teresa. a baby. I'm yeah. one year I'm one year younger than Usher, because uh, I, I had to Google this when I saw him come out on roller skates last night, and I thought to mm-hmm. myself, I hope I can skate like that when I'm his age, because I can't skate like that now. <laughs> it's never too late. It's never too late to learn how to skate. Well, Teresa Tamio, we talked last hour with Father Patrick Briscoe from Our Sunday Visitor about a lot of different faith things that— uh, were in the mix in the Super Bowl yesterday. I know you didn't get to ho- see the whole thing, but what right. jumped out to you? Well, I was trying to figure out this ad, He Gets Us, and I saw a, a very I got good, intel, um, by the email. way, if you need that. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I got intel on the He Gets Us campaign, if you need that. Yeah, because it's kind of confusing. I thought it was confusing. A, a couple of ways, I guess you could see it as them. If you go to their website, so I figure, okay, I'm going to go to the source to see what they have to say, because that's always I'm trained as a reporter to see what people are actually saying versus what other people are saying. And they're claiming, if you look at the description of the ad, that it, because it's an election year, they don't want to promote more division. They want to promote discussion and humility and treating each other kindly. But if you look at some of the in- images, it can be confusing because they say, well, you know, Jesus taught us to love and not hate, Well, but he also taught us to hate evil. And the scene outside the family planning clinic is confusing. What are they saying? Are they saying that abortion is okay because there's a woman washing the feet of a young girl, and then in the background you see pro-lifers with their signs, and they're in the background and the woman is in the front. So what are they trying to say there? It's just there's, I think if anything, I thought it was confusing. I don't know what other people think, but that's just my, my first take at it. Well, I can tell you that based on the history of the He Gets Us campaign, if it was promoting uh, being okay with abortion, then that was a mistake, accidental. Uh, that was not what they intended because I know yeah. that the Hobby Lobby folks have given lots and lots of money in right. the past to the He Gets Us campaign, and that uh, actually a, a bunch of the blowback on social media has been, why are these people, uh, you know, these conservative Christians who, you know, hate reproductive freedom, you know, spending money on a Super Bowl ad instead of housing the homeless? That's the that's the discourse on social media about these things. You know, and, and so it, it does leave a lot of sort of confusing interpretation. Is it trying to say that pro-lifers should, uh, you know, not be like pro-lifers are? Or is it trying to tell people who are into reproductive freedom that, uh, you know, hey, these Christians who are pro-lifers actually love you, right? Right. It it, it leaves a lot open. Um, But I know from my evangelical background that part of this is just like, Evangelicals are trying to find their voice in the mix of all these things. They don't mm-hmm. have sacraments. They don't have a, 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 a visible church. They don't have all these other things. They're trying to figure out, well, how do we say who we are? Right. Um, and I think that's part of it. Yeah, I did see some other uh, feedback on social media on Brian uh, Bomberger's uh, site where he said it, he found it a little bit confusing. I mean, he was very positive, too, about the overall campaign. And one of the scenes in that commercial was a, was a priest washing the feet. So, you know, it did give you kind of, a, of a, a Catholic interpretation as well. I don't know. I just I found it confusing. And when you think of, what, 200 million people watching this, I, I just I don't think we need more confusion. But overall, the campaign, I think, in, in the long run has been pretty good. So that was my take on it. But on a positive note, I Maybe we, I was telling Paul, there's a, I would love for people to go to the National Catholic Register website this morning, ncregister.com. They did a beautiful article interviewing a number of couples and asking us for quotes on how to spend St. Valentine's Day mm. on Ash Wednesday. Do you celebrate it on Wednesday in a special way? Obviously, we have to fast and, and follow the church teachings for that day and every day, but in particular beginning Lent. Or do we celebrate it at another time? So my, Dominic and I have some comments along with the other couple, so it's a sweet, sweet article on the register. Well, if you, uh, you have a workaround here, Teresa Tamio, and the workaround is this, that the most expensive restaurants in your town probably serve the smallest portions. So, uh, you know, it's one of those plates where it's like a massively expensive plate, but there's like one handful of food on it because it's like <laughs> fancy small food. So there, there's your workaround. There you go. I like that. I didn't even think of that. You know, so they they give you this like it's a highfalutin title and it's real special. Yeah, it's to like eat here's there, a half an paying. asparagus and one yeah. uh, ounce of fish. Right. It's right. Very. There you go. Well, I said I suggested that if because um, 
Valentine's Day, St. Valentine's Day is falling on Ash Wednesday, but World Marriage Day was yesterday. So maybe you could make that your Valentine's. You could either, if you have someone in your house who loves football, make that sacrifice for that person and sit down with them and watch the, the Super Bowl game. Or you could skip the Super Bowl altogether, which is what Deacon Dom and I did. We didn't watch it till the end of the night, and we had a little early um, celebration and went out to one of our favorite local, of course, Italian restaurants here in Metro Detroit. And then there's also, for example, in our area, we're doing a World Marriage Day dinner this coming Sunday, a week after World Marriage Day. So trying to kind of work around it a little bit. So, But there are some really good, um, beautiful quotes from, from some other couples in that article. So Over we're going to take a look at it. NCregister.com is where you can find that and lots of other great Linton things that you'll be uh, able mm-hmm. to see in the register as well. Teresa, also on your radar, you know, there's a, just a confluence of things going on on Wednesday with Ash Wednesday, with uh, Valentine's Day. It's also, and you probably already know this, it's Catholic Singles Awareness Day. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. uh, because if you are an eligible Catholic single person and you are walking around town and you see another person wearing ashes on their forehead and no ring on their finger, then you can invite them out to either have a light snack or one meal, which uh, is not the size of uh, two snacks put together or something like that. So yeah. you've got the Catholic Singles Awareness thing going on as well. So keep your eye That's out, cool. gentlemen, yeah. look for those virtuous women with ashes and no ring. I really love Ash Wednesday because I think it just you know it reminds us of, of who we are, where we came from. But also I love the fact that this is a, a day where we can really uh, wear, literally wear our, you know, our hearts on our sleeves, so to speak, as an old cliche says, to see that sign of the cross on your forehead, it gives you a chance to witness and explain. Because if, we would think that most people know what it is, but there's still a lot of people. And if you look at the amount of nuns, N-O-N-E-S, right, there are a lot of people who don't understand the basics of the faith. And I think, as you know, more and more evangelicals are also practicing Lent more strongly. Absolutely. And, and may even have ashes on their forehead. So it's a great witness. Yeah, I can tell you this, that ashes were not a thing in my evangelical background, and I now know tons and tons of evangelicals, even non-denominational churches, who have gotten into the ashes thing. I think people really do uh, uh, respond to that whole sacramental worldview, the idea that matter matters, that it matters what we say with our bodies, that things yes. things mean mm-hmm. stuff, uh, to put it as uh, theologically astutely as possible. Things mean stuff, Teresa. Amen. Amen. That's why it's so great to be Catholic. I just still can't believe it's Lent already, you know, on Wednesday. It's just, it's okay. We were just talking about Advent, weren't we? Oh, my goodness. It's been fast. But you know what? This is the easiest time of year, and Anna Mitchell and I are going to talk about this in a minute. Easiest time of year to encourage somebody to tune into Catholic Radio because everybody wants to do something, right? Ah. And Catholic Radio is, is a great tool to help you, like, enter in. So tune in. Stay tuned in. Tell a friend. Tell them Teresa Tamio's on every morning on EWTN and Ave Maria Radio. Teresa, have a wonderful day. Thanks. We'll talk to you next week. Ciao. All right. It is 16 past. We're back right after this. Support is from MediShare. Let's see. If something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into. And that is MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save many families up to 500 bucks a month. And that is huge. But it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The member satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works, too. It's been around for 30 years. Members have shared more than $5 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, really, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want to plan you're happy with. You can call right now. You'll get a price within two minutes. So see what you can say. This is a very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. Call 877-64-BIBLE. That's 877-64-BIBLE. 877-64-BIBLE. If the cold winter mornings make you want to stay in bed, it's time to get some Mystic Monk coffee or tea to help make kicking off the covers a little easier. And when you head to their site by clicking the link at sunrisemorningshow.com, you earn us a commission on your purchase without spending anything extra. While you're at our site, be sure to check out our online store where you can buy Sunrise Morning Show mugs and travel mugs. Get a mug and link to Mystic Monk Coffee at sonrisemorningshow.com. That's sunrisemorningshow.com. The most original and exclusive Catholic content is on EWTN Radio. You know, we talk story with each of our very unique guests for the whole hour. 
so that you can go deep with us as you yourself pursue your own story of heroic virtue and as you pursue intimacy with God. The Bear Wozniak Adventure, Saturday night, 6 Eastern on EWTN Radio. 18 past, here's Anna with headlines. The Senate is moving forward with a $95 billion aid bill for Ukraine and Israel, though the fate in the House is uncertain. Pope Francis yesterday during his Angelus address prayed for fraught situations around the world and marked the World Day of the Sick. Also yesterday, he canonized Argentina's first female saint. News at the top and bottom of each hour every weekday morning here on the Sunrise Morning Show. Anna Mitchell, as Teresa and, uh, and I were just discussing, this is the easiest time of year to invite somebody to listen to Catholic radio. Yep. People are looking for stuff, I mean, for crying out loud. There was a Lent promo that was bought during the Super Bowl yeah. last night with the Hallow people. People want something this time of year, and all you've got to do is lean over to somebody at Daily Mass or Ash Wednesday or a friend of yours and say, hey, you know that there's like a 24-7 Catholic resource running in our town, and all you got to do is turn on your radio? Well, you know, you don't even have to be that forward with someone at Mass. We've uh, created these little cards that you can print out if you go to Matt you posted them in the show notes right I did there you can okay. download the PDF yeah if you go to sunrise morning show.com and click on the show notes for today you can get a PDF with little business card sized switch to Catholic radio for Lent if you would like to see I'm uh, just about to post the image on our Facebook page if uh, if you would like to check it out but they're black and white so it's not going to like kill your printer or anything and we also have like a sort of a poster size like a poster one yeah if you, uh, you can if you, if you ask your pastor always before you put something on the bulletin board this is very important mm -hmm. but some of you are pastors some of you are deacons some of you are dres and if you go uh you can find at sunrise morning show.com in the show notes and we'll put them in the show notes every day that poster that you can throw up on a bulletin board or throw up wherever you like uh and it's got a QR code. It's it's very easy for people to connect with Catholic Radio. And we made it uh, to where no matter where you live, it still says switch to Catholic Radio. Exactly. And if somebody's exactly. like, where's Catholic Radio? You can be like, well, here's where it is in our town. So, yeah, there you have it. Absolutely. And um, if they listen on their smartphones, the QR code will take them to our app because Sunrise that's what show we app. can make a QR code for. But um, but yeah, if you've got the local Catholic radio station, write it on the back of the card. Indeed. Whatever You'd the frequency like, hey, happens to be. Here's how you find St. Gabriel just, radio you know, around hand here. It, here's hand how it you out find to Real folks. Presence radio. Yeah. Make it happen. Simple Again. as that. It's not as big a penance as you think. No. No. Morning show's a little weird, but the rest of the schedule's pretty cool. It's pretty good. SunriseMorningShow.com. Check it out. Ryan Lopez here. You know, there are many listeners who generously give monthly to Sacred Heart Radio. Their gifts range from $5 per month to $150 per month and even more. Now, Sacred Heart Radio is part of your daily life and you have never made a donation. We invite you to prayerfully consider what you can give to help us maintain our seven media platforms that make Sacred Heart Radio part of other people's lives. So to make your generous gift, please visit sacredheartradio.com and click donate. Thank you. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Twin Dental of Cincinnati. Since 1986, twin brothers Drs. David and Michael Rothen have been providing superior dental care in a relaxed and comfortable setting for the entire family. The twin dental doctors utilize advanced dentistry techniques from sedation to implants and the latest in cosmetic options to preserve and beautify smiles. Twin Dental, located just off the I-275 exit at Hamilton Avenue. For a complimentary evaluation, 513-825-6111 and online at twindental.com. Fish is back at Arby's. Just in time for Lent, two for $6 Arby's Crispy Fish Sandwich hangs over the sides and is served on a sesame seed bun with lettuce and tartar sauce. Or step up to Arby's Crispy King's Hawaiian Fish Deluxe Sandwich. It's delicious wild-caught Alaskan pollock, lightly breaded, cooked to crispy perfection, and served on a King's Hawaiian bun with lettuce, tomato, natural cheddar, and tartar sauce. Arby's is proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. I'm Emily Mackey, inviting you to an inspiring event for the pro-life community, a pro-life gathering for her. 
I'll be there to discuss theology of the body. Joining me will be pro-life advocate Rebecca Hagan and Donna Murphy of Heaven's Gain Ministries. The day includes mass, confession, and lunch. It's Saturday, February 24th at St. Susanna Church in Mason, brought to you by Cincinnati and Dayton Right to Life. For tickets, CincinnatiRightToLife.org. That's CincinnatiRightToLife.org. It's 23 minutes past the hour. You're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Thanks for joining us on a Monday morning. Brendan Hodge is back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show. He is Darwin from the Darwin Catholic blog, darwincatholic.blogspot.com, author of If You Can Get It, a novel from Ignatius Press, and is a contributing editor to The Pillar. Good morning, Brendan. Good morning. Great to be on with you. It is great to have you back. And you are working on a story for The Pillar about state funding and Catholic school enrollment. First of all, just give us the big picture of what you're looking at with this. So if we look at the big picture on Catholic education over the last uh, 50 years, uh, what we see is that, that although the percentage of the U.S. population that is Catholic has been pretty steady over that time, and the number of high school and elementary school students in the U.S. has remained pretty steady over that time. The number of students in Catholic schools has decreased by 65% over the last 50 years. And one of the big contributing factors since Vatican II is that if you look back to kind of the pre-conciliar church, where there were a lot of uh, religious brothers and sisters and a lot more priests, a lot of these schools were run primarily by consecrated religious, and these were people who dedicated their lives to serving the church. They did so without a whole lot of monetary cost, and so these schools were very inexpensive for Catholic families to send their students to. And as the schools have shifted to primarily lay teachers, uh, those teachers need to be paid a living wage, and school has become a lot more expensive, and a lot of Catholic families find themselves priced out of the market. But the big change that we've seen in the last few years is that an increasing number of states have been uh, creating parental choice programs where parents can take the funding that would go to support their children in public schools and use a portion of that money, usually not all of it, but a portion of it, to fund sending that student to a private school, including a Catholic school. And we're seeing this rapidly increase in some states. And... Um, that seems to be having a significant effect on Catholic school enrollment in those states. And so what we want to take a look at is the effect of those programs and what that would mean for Catholic schools as these programs expand. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what you've got, what you've gathered so far in in terms of data. And looking at the national picture, Brendan, uh, what percentage of, of Catholic school students are receiving funds from one of these state school choice programs? So that percentage has been growing very rapidly. In the 2021 to 2022 school year, it was 6.8% of Catholic school students. In the 2022 to 2023 school year, it was 10.5. So we saw a 50% increase in the number of Catholic school students getting funding. And that data is a year old. We're expecting data out later this month from the National Catholic Education Association, uh, which will show the percentage for the the current school year. So we're really excited to see how this trend is continuing. Yeah, okay. So in which states, uh, at least so far, are, are these programs utilized the most? So in last school year, the top states were Arizona, Indiana, Wisconsin, Florida, Ohio, and Iowa. And we know that uh, some of these numbers will be improving further. So, for instance, in Ohio, 37 percent of students were receiving funding. But as as you know, and I know, I know quite uh, well, Ohio yes. has just <laughs> significantly increased their ed choice program. And uh, that's going to mean that nearly all Catholic students in Ohio would be able to get funding and that parents who currently have their students in public schools but want to send them to Catholic schools would be able to get funding, would cover almost all the tuition to send their students to Catholic schools. So I'm thinking that percentage may be going up a lot 
this year and even more in the coming couple of years, and that may make a really big difference. Yeah, and uh, like we said, you're not completely done with analyzing all of the numbers, but so far, do you see better enrollment in in Catholic schools where parents can receive uh, tuition help from the state? We do. So what we see as the overall trend is that over the last 10 years, schools where um, the parents are uh, that are not on that top five list, schools that do not have big voucher programs, have seen their Catholic school enrollment go down by 12 percent just over the last 10 years. Wow. For this, those top states, they have decreased, but they've decreased only 6 percent. Um, and as I said, we've, we've seen some significant changes in those laws just in the last year. So we're really excited to see how those numbers have changed just in the last year or two. Do you have any thoughts on or predictions on uh, on what you think you'll see later this month, Brendan? Well, last year was the first year in quite a while that total Catholic school enrollment actually increased, according mm-hmm. to the National Catholic Education Association. And so uh, my expectation is that we may see that happen again. We may see Catholic school enrollment increase again, and it will probably be led by those states with very significant parental choice programs. Well, can I offer a few things for you to look at for me, asking just as a personal Absolutely. favorite? Or a personal favor, I mean. Um, I would love to see um, if, if there is a way to find this data, how many of the students taking advantage of these school choice programs are actually Catholic students. Um, because it's kind of interesting to me from the standpoint of a, a parent with kids in Catholic schools, um, the Catholic identity factor to this. How many people are actually going to a Catholic school because it's Catholic or if they're just going to it because they see it as a private school that has better academics? It'd be interesting. That, that to is see. a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, if you're able to find those numbers, I don't know, they probably might be difficult to do. But uh, if you can, that would be awesome, Brendan. And we've got Pillar Catholic linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Brendan, thank you. Thank you. All right, it's half past the hour now on the Sunrise Morning Show. It's time for news. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is disputing reported numbers of civilian casualties in Gaza since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. Speaking on ABC's This Week yesterday, Netanyahu said reports from, quote, urban warfare experts and other commentators show the ratio of deaths between Palestinian civilians and Hamas troops is less than one to one, he says. The prime minister said that 12,000 of the 20,000 casualties have been Hamas fighters. Yesterday's report by the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry claims more than 28,000 Palestinians have been killed. Pope Francis yesterday, during his Angelus address, prayed for fraught situations around the world, including in Ukraine and the Holy Land, as well as for Myanmar. He did so while he promoted the World Day of the Sick on the Feast of Our Lady of Lords. He says it's not possible to keep silent about the fact that, quote, there are so many people today who are denied the right to care and therefore the right to life, end quote. In his Angelus Address Catechesis, the Holy Father reflected on the Sunday Gospel reading, encouraging the faithful to convert every day to the loving, compassionate God that Jesus presents to us in the gospel. From Vatican Radio, Lisa Zingarini reports. Pope Francis remembered that the gospel on the healing of the leper offers us an example of Jesus' style with those who suffer, few words and concrete actions. The Pope recalled that we see Jesus behave like this several other times in the Gospel when he heals the deaf and dumb, the paralyzed and many other needy people. He always does this, he speaks little and promptly follows his words with actions, said the Pope. But Francis went on to note that we can meet his wonderful way of loving also in some people we encounter in our lives, generous in action, reluctant to show off, but ready to be helpful, friends to whom we can ask for help. 
This concreteness, the Pope remarked, is even more important today in a world where an evanescent virtuality of relationships seem to be increasingly prevalent. L'amore ha bisogno di concretezza. Love cannot be reduced to nice words, images on a screen, selfies or hasty messages, the Pope said. These may be useful tools, but they are not enough for love. They cannot replace concrete presence. Pope Francis therefore invited the faithful to ask themselves if they are able to listen to people and make themselves available to meet their needs, or instead make excuses and hide behind abstract and useless words. I am Lisa Zingarini. Pope Francis yesterday canonized Argentina's first female saint. The Argentinian Pope raised to the altars, now Saint Maria Antonia de San Jose, known as Mama Antula. In his homily, the Holy Father said when the Jesuits were expelled from Argentina, the spirit lit a missionary flame in her based on trust in providence and perseverance. He said, quote, she was a wayfarer of the spirit. She traveled thousands of kilometers on foot, crossing deserts and taking dangerous paths, bringing God with her, saying today... She is a model of apostolic fervor and audacity for us. Two people have been injured and the shooter is dead following a shooting at Joel Osteen's megachurch in Houston. The woman entered the church yesterday afternoon wearing a trench coat and backpack armed with what authorities called a long rifle and began shooting. Two off-duty officers then engaged the suspect, striking her. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas has acknowledged the immigration system is broken. Mark Mayfield reports. Speaking on NBC's Meet the Press, Mayorkas claimed Republicans didn't even read what was in the bipartisan Senate border bill before striking it down. House Republicans are accusing Mayorkas of breaking the law in his handling of the southern border. Another impeachment vote is expected this week after last week's vote failed in the House. Mayorkas calls Republicans' allegations baseless. I'm Mark Mayfield. And the Kansas City Chiefs are back-to-back Super Bowl champions coming back from behind in overtime to beat the 49ers 25-22 to in Super Bowl 58. That's the news. It's 35 past the hour. The sun Now you can use Venmo to give to Sacred Heart Radio. Just type in at Sacred Heart Radio, all one word, to give a gift of any amount. To help broadcast God's life-giving message over our seven media platforms, use Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air is a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio. Stay warm and comfortable during the coldest of weather with Schneller Knockelman for your heating repair, replacement, and maintenance. Find us at skpha.com, skpha.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Stegman Landscape. Serving the tri-state since 1979, Stegman Landscape can create a picture-perfect landscape all year long. From design, installation, and maintenance to retaining walls, patios, and outdoor fireplaces to enjoy any season, Stegman Landscape can do it all. Stegman Landscape making the world more beautiful one yard at a time. 859-781-1562 and online at stegmanlandscape.com. It's 24 minutes before the hour on this Friday, February the 9th. Your forecast is brought to you on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio by Schneller Nockeman Plumbing, Heating, and Air online at skpha.com. Getting even warmer today, and it's rather warm outside right now with temperatures in the lower 50s as you're heading out the door. For Cincinnati, mostly cloudy skies today, an isolated evening rain chance and a high of 62. Some scattered showers and a few downpours possible tonight with an overnight low of 54. Rain ends early tomorrow, then it'll be mostly cloudy and mild with a high of 60 degrees. For the Miami Valley Dayton area, cloudy early, then partly cloudy this afternoon with a high of 62. Increasing clouds with showers late tonight and an overnight low of 50. Rain showers early, then decreasing clouds later in the day, and high tomorrow of 57 degrees. This is Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. The Sunrise Morning Show continues, as does our series with Bear Wozniak on his book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Good morning, Bear. Aloha, Matt. Good to talk to you. Cindy and I are here in Florida today. Very cool. And 
Yeah, you've been speaking all over the place and going all over the world uh, with your bride. And, you know, uh, you've talked in a number of contexts about men being made out of mud. And if anybody forgets that, all you got to do is pay attention to the liturgy this week because at Ash Wednesday, we all hear it when we get ashes. Remember, you are dust, <laughs> right? And to dust, you shall return. I wonder wow. when when you think about that idea of those are our origins. Uh, what does that bring up for you as you kind of think through this question of what it means to be a man? Well, you think about it. You know, the word Adam, Adamo, it means earth. And the, the Latin word uh, for man, one of the Latin words for man is homo sapien, right, where you get comes from the word humu, which means, which means earth. And uh, so men, uh, man uh, is, you know, women weren't formed from mud, men were. And then the, uh, women are more highly distilled. They were taken from Adam's rib. But there's something about men that are just like, you know, there's just that grit uh, that uh, is kind of men come factory loaded with. But it's interesting because when God made men out of mud, he also breathed into them a life-giving spirit. It became a living soul. So some men get mis- get the feeling that it's all up to them. They just got to grit it out. They got to pull themselves up by, by the bootstraps. They got to man up and just be tough. But actually, uh, we have the Holy Spirit there, you know, to give us the grace. So it's grit and grace. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the early church fathers called humans amphibians because we're heaven and earth, you know. And so it's that, it's, it's, it's that that gives us the, um, the, uh, we, we get mistaken if we think it's just all up to us. If that was true, God wouldn't have sent Jesus, and Jesus wouldn't have sent the Holy Spirit. Yeah, uh, if the grit doesn't get the grace, it's just grit, man. It's just grits on the ground. <laughs> you know, I can't yeah. help but think, you know, since you uh, invoke Louis L'Amour in, in cowboy novels in your in your book, uh, the uh, the great one of the greatest novels uh, of that genre is Charles Portis's book True Grit, which has been made into not one but two different movies. And yeah. you know, grit is one thing, uh, but without the grace, man, it's just a pile of dust. Yeah, you know it's cool when 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 in, in Corinthians when Paul says, "Act like men," but then he says, "Do all things in love." In the next sentence, so it's not about this macho stuff at all. But men do need to be tough. You're, you know, I was t- talking with my bride, Cindy, yesterday, and I said, when, a man, when the Bible says that when, when we talk about men are the providers and they're also the protectors, well, you know, when you provide for your family, uh, you are, that is a big part of protecting them, you know, providing shelter for them and things like that. But we, we as men, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a softness to men these days. Uh, uh, they, they, they feel like life owes them a living, that they want to be taken care of. And we, we act like we're victims instead of victors. And uh, when I remember, uh, you know what, and when we face adversity, we think, oh, that's not fair. But really, the Lord allows that adversity in our life. Uh, and when we, but when we return in that adversity to trusting into God, then that's the greatest adventure of all. You know, as a, as a person in the new evangelization, that how many times have you faced adversity, but you just kept the faith and kept going, and, and then you saw the, the walls come tumbling down, and you saw, God, you saw God go out in front of you and move mountains. Well, and this is another thing that's such an interesting point to reflect upon as we're in this season of Lent, which on Ash Wednesday starts with Jesus saying, hey, do all this stuff. But don't try and get credit for it, or it's going to be for nothing, (laughs) right? You'll have your reward. And I think part of where that comes from, part part of what makes us soft, part of what makes us not do well with this adversity is we want recognition for every good thing that we do, right? But going back to that idea of dirt, uh, that same word that you get, that huma, uh, is is connected to the word humility, right? So part of this is not doing it because— we we're getting credit or not doing it because we're getting recognition or not doing it so that at the end of the day, we can say, I did this right. But it's, having it's the humility so, to understand how it all works together. And when you're doing that, when you, whatever you're doing, that's really cool. That you're doing good at, it's probably because God gave you that gift and ability and a charism. Not just you, you probably did, bear. <laughs> right? but I mean, you did cooperate with God to yeah. develop it, but you know, when it comes to pride saying, look at what I just did. I remember I was, I was uh, dropping in on this big wave, you know, the, you know, surfing in a, piling in real really on a big wave with my stand-up paddleboard and uh, dropping and leaning way forward and there's people coming by an academy and i go these people are going to think i'm so awesome 
And I just, and my paddle broke, and I face planted on my board and went triple, <laughs> falling over. So remember, pride comes before the fall. So uh, whenever we think we're all that, you know, the beautiful thing is we can count on God to, to humble us. You know, if we don't, if we don't seek to be humble, God will, God has a way of letting that happen to us anyway. God's yeah, anybody faithful. who thinks that they're all that in a bag of chips is probably just a bag <laughs> of chips. So, yeah. But I can't help also but thinking in, in light of what you just said of what, um, what St. Augustine says about this uh, need for cooperation between our, uh, what we do and what God does, and to realize that at the end of the day, anything that we did on our own is still using stuff that he gave to us, right? So there is yeah. no such thing as on our own. Uh, St. Augustine's great quote is that uh, he says to God that when it comes to you know, us and, and our achievements, he says, in crowning your, our, our merits, you crown your own gifts. Yes, and the gifts come from the giver, you know, and and it all comes, you know, and then you die. So what is all this recognition and all this wealth and all this glory, you know? We, we you know, we, like you said in Ash Wednesday, from dust we come, from dust we will return, you know? And so just to remember that, that men, we, that women uh, want you to be men. They want to see that grit. They want to see that strength. But you also have to have that grace uh, that you, not only does God give you grace, but you need to give grace to those around you and not expect them to be as tough and as enduring as you are, but but to but to be there for them. And men need to lift women. Men need to lift their children, and then love them and give them grace. But God God gave you that God gave you that brawn, uh, not only physically but in your soul, the way a man is made. So so uh, use it use it, uh, it with all humility and use it to lift others, not yourself. Yeah, God took the dirt and He breathed His spirit of life into it. But it turns out He actually made the dirt too. So uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you have it. Oh, a little you know, thing like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, and as as we always said growing up, Bear, God made the dirt, and the dirt don't hurt. So. <laughs> My wife's got a big grin on her face. You know, and I was always the kid in the neighborhood that was just filthy. I don't know. I'd be playing in the dirt, and I'd be playing with a friend of mine, Earl. He'd play in the dirt right with me, and he'd get up. He wouldn't have a speck of dust on him, and I just looked like I'd been, you know, just rolled rolled through the – well, I was. I was rolled through the mud. But yeah. – um, Bear was that second grader on the block with mud circles around both his nostrils, and we all know why. Well, Bear. Here's the way it works. You know, when you get those pants that are too long so you can grow into them over, over a full-year period. Oh, you rip up your those cuffs? Well, you, yeah, your mother roll up the cuffs, and then, and then you walk in the house, and you're just trailing dirt behind you as you walk in. Those cuffs make great dirt holders. Well, the book is called 12 Rules for Manliness, and it is by Bear Wozniak. We encourage you to, uh, to go check that out. We've got a link to Bear's site as well where you can find all kinds of stuff and connect with other men uh, as well. Bear, thank you as always. Have a wonderful day. Mahalo, Matt. All right. We're back with Stephanie Mann here in just a moment. It's a quarter till. Support is from Solidarity Health Share. Do you have an insurance plan that pays for everything, even things that violate your beliefs? Have you ever felt there has to be a better way, but didn't know you had any options? If you answered yes, I've got some good news for you. There is a better way and a more affordable way. Solidarity HealthShare can save you hundreds of dollars each month while actually supporting your beliefs. Because the best news is that Solidarity HealthShare costs a whole lot less than insurance. It's time to jump in and put your money where your faith is and put some money back into your wallet at the same time. Join Solidarity HealthShare, a faith-based healthcare sharing community. Prices start as low as $384 a month for families. Call to see how much you can save, 844-334-3245. That's 844-334-3245. Solidarity HealthShare, 844-334-3245. Have you subscribed to get the Sunrise Morning Show show notes? When you subscribe, the show notes arrive in your inbox weekday mornings with the list of featured guests, books, articles, and websites we'll discuss. And then you'll also get the podcast with markers to quickly find and hear an interview again or to see the Sunrise Morning Show on video. So to know when your favorite guests are on, go to sunrisemorningshow.com and click subscribe. One of the reasons we should go to Mass is because, if you look in the Catechism, you will see the fruits of Holy Communion. And these are remarkable things that we can receive at every Mass that we attend. We encounter the risen Lord, and He shares something of His divine life and love with us. 
The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, live from the EWTN Chapel, every morning, 8 Eastern, on EWTN Radio and Television. Hi, this is Janet Williams. Please join us for Women of Grace today at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on EWTN Radio. Wipe that sleep out of your eyes and now back to the Sunrise Morning Show. 13 till, here's Anna with headlines. The Senate is passing an aid package for Israel and Ukraine, or at least it's moving forward. The fate of it is uncertain in the House. Pope Francis yesterday during his Angelus address prayed for fraught situations around the world, including in the Holy Land, as well as in Ukraine and Myanmar, and also celebrated the World Day of the Sick. Also yesterday, the Holy Father canonized Argentina's first female saint. News at the top and bottom of each hour every weekday morning here on the Sunrise Morning Show. By the way, uh, speaking of you know, all the things that we do, uh, please do go to sunrisemorningshow.com. Send that link to people who are looking for good resources for Lent. We're going to interview a lot of authors with a lot of great things, some people who have apps, people who have all kinds of ways to help you enter into this season of Lent in a better way, a better way to start your Lent, as it were. But again, sunrisemorningshow.com. Find lots of great links to authors. Find a downloadable uh, set of cards that you can give out to people to tell them to switch to Catholic Radio for Lent. I'm Matt Swaim, joined now by Stephanie Mann. She is online at supremacyandsurvival.blogspot.com. That's also the name of her book, Supremacy and Survival, How Catholics Endured the English Reformation. Stephanie, good morning. Good morning. Go Chiefs. I'm betting that you, as a person from Kansas, even though uh, the Chiefs are not technically in Kansas, are pretty excited this morning. Did you stay up? Yes. Yes, I was there to the bitter end. Or, no, to the glory. It wasn't end. bitter for you guys. It was only it was, bitter for the Niners. No, it was so. it was nerve wracking though. It was, yeah, it was, it was fun though. It was well matched, a very well matched game. Yes, it was. Well, we come straight off of the Super Bowl yes. and chicken wings and nachos, <laughs> uh, right smack into Mardi Gras if you're in the French tradition. But a lot of interesting food feasty days in the English tradition as well. Before we hit yes. Ash Wednesday, uh-huh. so tell us a little bit about. Shrove Tide, where that word comes from, and what England right. is known for doing historically to prepare right. for Lent. I think, in a way, the Shrove Tide, among all the names, the Mardi Gras, the Carnival, the Fasching that's in, in Germany, uh, Shrove Tide really kind of fits more with the purpose of the season. As part part of it was to get kind of all the well, get the meat and festivity out of your system and out of your larder in, in the the different systems that, uh, and different traditions that we, you recounted. But in England, the fact that they use the word shrove tide means they're focusing on one aspect, particular aspect of this, and that is confession to be shriven or to to and shrove. Those are words to derive from the English uh, word for going to confession, going to the sacrament of, of penance, preparing for Lent by going to that sacrament, confessing your sins, maybe receiving some guidance on what you need to do to avoid those near occasions of sin and, and committing those sins again, and then preparing for Ash Wednesday and for uh, the, the whole season of Lent. Part of it was indeed getting rid of eggs and meat and milk and and all those things that you did not consume during Lent. And so there's the tradition on, actually on Monday was collop Monday, meaning you you used up all the meat you had, all the bacon, all the pork or anything you had that you you kind of fried it all up and just uh, took care of it. On Pancake Day or Shrove Tuesday, that was the day to use up your eggs and your milk. And so one of the ways to do that was to make pancakes. And so... Uh, that was part of that tradition is use up those things so they're not in your larder. Uh, don't let anything go to waste, obviously, but that way you're prepared to practice your you know, the abstinence and the fasting that's appropriate to Lent. And so that, those are part of that English tradition. But again, part of the emphasis is on going to confession. So you're pre- preparing both, you'd say, practically and spiritually in Shrove Tide. Indeed, you know, and I've uh, every year for about the past eight years, you know, put out on social media. I would love it since you know we, you and I, Stephanie, 
live in a English colony that got its independence a couple of hundred yes. years or so ago, that yeah, uh, we should reclaim great. some of these English Shrove Tribe traditions. So if the U.S. bishops, if any of them are listening, I, I would love it if Bacon Monday could be something more of an official observance. <laughs> Pancake Tuesday <laughs> as well. But I do think that this reminds us, uh, you know, there are people who, I mean, I think we notice it more in like New Orleans where Mardi Gras is like its own season yeah. and everything that like, that they may not necessarily connect the concept of Mardi Gras and the right. party with the Lent that's supposed to come afterwards. That these th these two things are meant to complement one another. They're meant to go hand in hand. Yes. In fact, you know, speaking of the Mardi Gras and sometimes the excesses that come with Carnival and those kind of celebrations, that's one of the reasons that there began a tradition of having 40 hours adoration, that devotion of having the Blessed Sacrament exposed on the altar with many candles uh, around it and having someone in, in before the Blessed Sacrament for 40 hours starting on what used to be called Quinquagesima Sunday, the Sunday before Ash Wednesday, through into Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, Saint, so that there was a, a kind of a, another place to go other than the streets and rabble rousing and, and uh, enjoying yourself too much, maybe having some regrets the next day. You could go to before the Blessed Sacrament and pray there. And sometimes they, I mean, they have a mass of exposition and then a mass of, of deposition to to uh, also celebrate. But that's one of those traditions that came out of someone getting that uh, out of balance and, and going too far. You know, you don't really want to have something to confess on Ash Wednesday no, you're not, or Shrove Tuesday. You're not, you're not so, uh, I mean, bear in mind, we're calling these Shrove Tuesdays, not like... Uh, sin Tuesdays, right? The goal right. is not to exactly. do horrible things, as many horrible things as you can before Lent hits. It's uh, really just to kind yes. of clear out the pantry so that uh, you're not tempted. So, uh, but I'm exactly. uh, always curious, and you bring this up every year as well, uh, about, yes. you know, you live in Wichita. How far are you from yes. liberal Kansas where they have the International Pancake Day race? It's about... Uh, 150 miles. It's out. It's in southwestern Kansas, so it's it's a ways from Wichita. Yeah. Well, uh, so, if you yeah. could let people know how yeah. that goes down. Well, actually, of course, it's even further from the the, the uh, location that that uh, began the tradition. In only England, uh, and this is uh, it, this pancake races are celebrated in other places in England, but only England is the one with the large a longest tradition because a a housewife was preparing her pancakes. And she heard the bells for the last time to to get in line for confession. And so she ran out of her house with her apron on, a kerchief over her head, you know, because women covered their heads in mass and church, and her pancake still in the pan in hand and ran to the church so that she could participate in confession. And so there began a tradition of having these pancake races. And the, part of the rule is that, that you have to flip the, pan, the lady. It's only ladies. Can only in in uh, only particularly I think in the other places they have, have a pretty strict rule that you have to be local and you can't have won the race more than three times you can't run again if you've run that often but you have to flip a pancake at the beginning of the race you run a certain distance run back and flip the pancake again and a more a more than since 1950 the ladies in only England have competed with the ladies of liberal Kansas in the international pancake day races. So, uh, of course, England's uh, race time is, uh, is uh, before ours, you, you'd say, because of the time zones here in uh, Kansas. But yeah, they, they run the race and whoever scores the best time wins. So we'll have to find out later today who won this year. But I think they're pretty much equal because after, you know, that many years, it's going to even out the averages are. But I would yes, think so. This is a celebration. But you only win so many times before they uh, they retire your number. Yes. In the International yeah, Pancake Day. They, they got term limits in the International Pancake Day. Right? Yes, <laughs> for race pancake races. Well, definitely check out Stephanie's uh, post on Shrovetide Traditions from England. It's at her blog, Supremacy and Survival, the English Reformation. Let's all get ready for Lent as best we can over this next uh, yes. day and a half. Stephanie, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. God bless you. Again, all the guests we talked to, you can find their resources and links and pages at sunrisemorningshow.com. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Fat Tuesday. May God bless you and keep you and grant you his peace. I'm Father Rob Jack. 
Join me this afternoon for Driving Home the Faith, when Monsignor Peter Vacari will discuss the Catholic Near East Welfare Society. Dr. Jerry Creek will talk about his new book on anxiety entitled Litanies of the Heart. I'll speak about the Feast of Our Lady of Lords with frequent traffic and weather. That's this afternoon beginning at 4 on Sacred Heart Radio. You're on the road to Christ the King. You rely on your car, so rely on the experts at Fort Mitchell Garage, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio. They can do it all from brakes, tires, and heating and cooling to towing and collision repair and more. Fort Mitchell Garage on Dixie Highway and Park Hills. On the web at fortmitchellgarage.com. St. Vincent de Paul, Northern Kentucky, understands the importance of a helping hand when life becomes difficult. Through the grace of God and the amazing generosity of volunteers and donors, St. Vincent de Paul, Northern Kentucky has been able to provide over $200,000 in rent and utility assistance to nearly 2,000 neighbors in need in the last 12 weeks alone. The prayer is to continue to faithfully serve those in need well into the future. To learn how you can help, visit svdpnky.org and follow along on social media. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Hoting Realtors. Equipped with the latest technology and market knowledge, Hoting Realtors can make the buying and selling process easier. 513-451-4800 and Hoting.com. I'm Emily Mackey, inviting you to an inspiring event for the pro-life community, a pro-life gathering for her. I'll be there to discuss theology of the body. Joining me will be pro-life advocate Rebecca Hagan and Donna Murphy of Heaven's Gain Ministries. The day includes mass, confession, and lunch. It's Saturday, February 24th at St. Susanna Church in Mason, brought to you by Cincinnati and Dayton Right to Life. For tickets, CincinnatiRightToLife.org. That's CincinnatiRightToLife.org. Wimberg Landscaping, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, has been beautifying properties for over 40 years. Wimberg offers professional one-stop landscaping services from initial design and installation of all plant materials and hardscapes to ongoing maintenance, including lawn service, leaf and snow removal. Wimberg Landscaping. 513-271-2332 513-271-2332 or on the web at wimberglandscaping.com. That's wimberglandscaping.com. The highest standards, integrity, and best practices are core values at Rainbow International of Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky, your partners in residential and commercial insurance repair and restoration. Rainbow International, proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. 513-271-1000. I am Father Rufino Ezama, the Provincial Superior of the Comboni Missionaries. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com.